Live shot this morning. It might be a bit slick out there. Be careful if you're uh, traveling. Uh, Susan Williams joining us this morning, uh, coming up from uh, Rouseville, saying that uh, some parts may be a little rough. Yeah, but they were out taking care of them. I was behind uh, one of the, the salt trucks or, you know, spreading something out there to keep us safe. So I felt, <laughs> well, good. I felt like I was safe on your roads. <laughs> good. Yeah, it's it's a weird temperature where it could go either way. And, That's right. Yeah, you just got to be careful. Yeah. Pay attention to what's going on. I like seeing a little bit of that white stuff laying out there. It kind of is nice against all the Christmas lights. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm hoping we get some snow that sticks. I, I'm anxious to actually get out to ski, too. So I, I'd i like too. some more snow, <laughs> fresh snow. My husband skied yesterday and again again today. Really? So uh, if you get to the right slopes, they're making it. It's cold enough. I know, that, um, but still. Not, not the same. Not the same. same. <laughs> not the same. And that goes for everything from snowballs <laughs> to skiing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Susan, I don't know if you... This is just unbelievable to me, but it was a week ago we were hanging out at the uh, All Chamber event. Yeah. Can you believe yeah. that? Boy, time is going so fast. Wasn't that a great event? Oh, my gosh. It was nice wonderful. turnout. Uh, lots of good uh, networking going on and just, just friendly visiting. Um, and, of course, the announcements of the winners from the uh, Get on the Trail contest. So the Oil Region Alliance announced those winners, and, and we're excited to see what those local businesses do. Absolutely. I, I always like watching people when they first come because they get into their little groups. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they start migrating and working the room and moving around. And sure that's right. enough. Yeah. that's And Cross Creek is such a great facility. We're, we're so pleased. Um, they actually are the hosts for that night, provide all the refreshments, and really gracious of them to invite us all in for the evening. And it, it's nice because that you can spread out enough that, yeah, you look across the room and see an old friend. Right. And it, it was great. We had a, we have a great time, too. It's, it's also amazing. I, and I don't know if people realize this when they go into the event, but um, they'll see somebody and they'll go, oh, you know what? I I do business with them, mm -hmm. and they're in Meadville or Titusville right. or Franklin or Oil City. Yeah, we get a little out of sight, out of mind, and that's why I think it is important to get out to these events. We hear from a lot of our members or community members that, oh, I don't, I don't really, that's kind of not my thing, you know, I'm not a mingler, and it's not about just that. That's fun, too. <laughs> you know? Right. But... Um, uh, there's always great food and refreshment there, but it's really about making connections with people that you just might not have seen in a while, or you know, sometimes it's the guy two doors away that you never have True. a chance to visit with, and it gives you gives you a nice uh, nice environment to catch up a little bit. Well, that's out of the way. Yeah. Well, we're going to do it again. Um, not quite to that magnitude, but on the 18th, we're going to have an open house at the chamber, and we'd invite all of, uh, all of our members. And listeners, if you're interested in coming in and seeing what the chamber's like, we'd, we'd love to have you. Give us a call uh, so we know to expect you and have enough food. Uh, Hot Pepper Catering is going to be providing Ooh. our food that evening. So if you know Dottie, she'll do a great job, and we'll have some, some drinks there and uh, invite you in to see how we've decorated and how we're prepared for the holiday. Uh, a couple years ago, Dottie was catering an event, and she made this dip that was just unbelievable. Ah. And uh, so I, I kept just sneaking over, and she was watching me. I would sneak over and I'd eat the chip, and <laughs> she'd come over and say, you know, I'll tell you how I made that. I'm like, really? Because you don't want to ask it. You know, that's their yeah. secret, right? Yeah. And she's like, oh, here you go. So well, we Dottie's, make it every year now. <laughs> yeah, Dottie's great. She does a lot of local events, and that's a great lead into. I, I was just at a dinner over the weekend that Dottie uh, was catering at the Days Inn in, in Oil City, um, an Arts Council sponsored event. And this is a great time of year to get out to, uh, you know, we have so many great groups that are sponsoring fabulous programs, uh, concerts and shows. And, you know, we, we talk about it, Luke, all the time how people say, oh, there's just nothing to do around here. There's no better time than right now to get your kids dressed up and get them out there and seeing uh, all of the great things that are going on in the community. Our local theaters are are just putting on some wonderful shows. So, you know, there's there's lots of places you can find those lists. Call the, call the chambers. We'll do our best I to get don't, you to them. I don't understand how people can say that anymore. I mean, take last weekend. Oh, Every community yeah. had a million things going on. That Santa was amazing. He was everywhere. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> Did you, just, Mary Cochran from the Oil Region Alliance <laughs> put up a short video on Facebook, I guess, a couple of days ago of Santa arriving in Oil City mm -hmm, on, the train. on a train, mm -hmm. and, on, a, on yeah. a red caboose. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, kudos to the folks uh, closer to you uh, taking advantage of um, you know that the Small Business Saturday, going around getting pictures of, of the business owners, yeah. holding up signs and putting it on Facebook and Twitter and 
Yeah, what I a think, way to help support businesses. I think Small businesses. Business Saturday really just rocked this year. Um, that's been around for a while, but you know, social media has helped make it so much easier for us to share. The business owners could not have been more excited and cooperative about participating. They were all willing to really kind of look at their hours, uh, give a donation towards a gift basket. We rewarded people for making uh, several stops. The shops that I were, was in said that they had had one of their best Saturdays in memory. Oh, that's it was wonderful. Really a, really a good day and it's so important for us to support local business and I was out there um, going to some some shops that I don't go to all the time and and really trying to look through them as it through the lens of now what could I buy here that might make a great great Christmas gift and I didn't go into one shop that I couldn't find something for someone well you know I told Mark I said some of the best memories I have of of actually receiving a gift is something that I wasn't expecting Mm -hmm. and something that was unique and maybe at the moment you think oh that's Okay, that's different. <laughs> but then it's you start to think about that, or you it's always in the top of your mind, and yep, those I'd are really wonderful gifts. The listeners to just walk down your local main street, to start in your own community, and then then go to your neighboring communities, and you know don't be afraid to walk into some place that you think well they they wouldn't have anything for me. Go in and, and talk a little bit to the shop owner and see a gift certificate. A, you know they they just may have something you don't even know they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that was one of the. Um, the goals of the cash mobs. Um, mm. uh, you know, a lot of communities have done cash mobs, and the idea is to try to get you into stores so you can see that they have things you'd never know they have. Uh, Williams Decorating, we all think about that as a place where you go in to get um, paint, you know, paint and flooring. Um, but they have art supplies, they have all kinds of fun stuff in oh, wow. there. So the, the most fun is, is going into that. a place like that and just poking around, yeah, you know, yeah. and making those discoveries. I, I discovered the very same thing yeah. about uh, Williams, you know, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And so I know now if, you know, there's art supplies need, I can go yeah. there. And if you are so uns- uninspired as to be able to figure out how to reuse things in a different way, jump on Pinterest. <laughs> 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 you, can, <laughs> you, you can completely change uh, the use of an item. <laughs> you know, let's, let's talk about the folks who uh, maybe they don't live in the area anymore, but they take an interest or they have family or friends who still live here. Those people like to receive gifts from the area, don't they? Oh, they, they do. They do. Um, yeah, everything from, you know, locally made food items, chocolates and maple syrup and, uh, you know, there's there are all kinds it's of little things. little bottles of oil. Ah, little bottles oh. of oil. <laughs> and a number of us have gift shops that have things with the local branding. So Drake Well Museum has a great little gift shop. You'd find all kind of items there. And we actually do find that, that so many people that have moved out of this area or, or even just have some ties to this area really, really care about our oil history. There's a lot of great little books. You don't have to spend a lot of money there. You can buy some, some books about our history that start at $3. Yeah. Um, the, the Venango Museum in Oil City has, has some great gift items and we have a few ourselves you know if you want to and not to mention t-shirt. how many local artists and or writers do we have in this area yep yeah we do and and uh, again you'll find them out at some of our local events but get to the local art galleries each of our communities have some art galleries uh, you know in Franklin you've got hatched in the Liberty Galleria in Oil City you've got the transit fine arts gallery and I, I know you have some places right here in, in Titusville as well so they tend to have local wares. And a lot of these artists operate on the internet too, so folks that they are do. Yeah. that are from the area here can keep connected that way yeah. too. I haven't done it, but I imagine you can uh, throw the the, ter- the terms Etsy in Etsy um, Oil City Titusville mm. Venango and probably come up with some local artists right there. Do you think technology has made it easier for people who um, maybe want to dabble in publishing, write a oh, book? Yeah. Because uh, how many local writers do we have and and that's wonderful to see you know in, in terms of that art form yeah it and and i i don't have the answer to how many local writers but i know 6500 okay <laughs> <laughs> but i'm sure we have several there's a there's a group in uh in franklin the bridge um it's a literary group and they get together and help each other they do readings and so not only is it easier to get published but it's easier to connect with other writers and uh, and people that are interested in supporting one another and helping each other through the oh that's process. great see i'm trying to organize a book club here 
ah. of just cliff notes because we don't have time to read the full book, but we'll do the cliff notes. Well, he's also trying go. to learn how to read too. There you go. Well, what I just I just saw that one of our members, Rick Capozzi, he's offering a class on speed reading. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so um, check him out. He's in our membership, and you'll find him on Facebook. And uh, Rick does some great work with, uh, particularly has a passion for working with students at the universities. Uh, has worked a lot with Penn State, and I thought, you know, that just might not be a bad idea for me to look into. Wow. You know, that's same something, way. That's something that, like riding a bicycle. Yeah. Once you learn that, you never forget it. Yeah. Uh, I learned how to do it when I was in the service, and we had an, an actual class on that, and it's come in so handy. So. Yeah. Learn it, and you'll have it forever. Yeah, I don't think you know? I formally do it, but I th- I'm pretty good at scanning. <laughs> <laughs> and we learned that w- when we started working on websites and, and uh, planning things for social media, that we actually we read different when we read online. But I'm guessing that we've hit a point now where we're going to start taking those ways we read online and use those on, you know, on our, mm. our books that we're reading, too, that we, we have a real scan mentality. I, yeah, I don't disagree <laughs> yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, what's next for you in the chamber? Oh boy, I would I would say what's next is planning. Um, we are like most organizations, uh, seating new board members. So we are welcoming in new leadership into the chamber. Uh, we have a number of I think we have four new board members coming on, and we're preparing for how to start the year uh, with a plan. Uh, we'll we'll kick off our year with a board retreat the the first working week of the of the month or of January, and uh, it's it's about trying to be be better next year, um, reviewing what we did in the past year or two and what worked and what maybe needs a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of uh, change and seeing if we can implement that and and I, I think we care about what other boards in the area are doing too I, like I said I know there's uh, others in the same boat and many of our board members serve on other boards so this is really our time of planning I spent most of yesterday doing doing review and getting information out to uh, to board members that need to be part of that planning process budgets everybody's approving budgets <laughs> so, <laughs> and this um, is the time of year where you start planning uh, like you're uh, the citizen of the year, that kind of thing. We do, you know, the yeah. thing that uh, you know we reporters call affectionately the rubber chicken circuit. Yeah, early I, in the year. I think I'll be able to share probably by next week. I'll be able to share with you who will be. Oh wow! Uh, who will be honoring oh, as be our cool. citizen of the year um, this year? So that's that's always exciting, and I think it's important to mention that in that planning phase, we know that we have to begin that right now for uh, for the year and things that are going to be happening clear out in July and September in terms of we've got to make reservations for uh, the locations that we're going to have things in for our caters because they get very busy. Um, But we also have to be thinking about how we're going to fund events. And so for those listeners who are businesses who typically support the events of the chambers and organizations like ours, this is a great time for you to look at your budget and say, who do we want to support and how do we want to do that next year? And maybe, just maybe you have a little money left over. <laughs> We're lucky enough to hear from a few, and I would suggest that others uh, take a look at that too. Is there maybe a little room for you to uh, gift to an important organization or cause that you care about before the end of the year? Uh, and, and most of us, you know, if you need to do that but apply it towards next year, most of us can do that. So uh, Now, you and Krista went on a trip back in October. We did. The information you picked up there, mm-hmm. have you started to use that in the, the activities um, – as of recent, or are those things you say, okay, we're into a new year, let's see how we can um, maybe incorporate some I'm guessing some of this. Chris is like me, that hardly a day goes by that we don't reflect on things we learned and heard there at that conference. But for me, probably one of, one of the ones that's uh, most specific is I knew that I wanted to ask another board uh, executive, chamber executive, to come and help us with our retreat. So I was all ears, and I um, identified Joe Hurd, who is the Blair County executive. He's been there for quite some time, and I heard in his comments uh, during during that uh, conference things that told me that he was providing good leadership to his organization and that he could perhaps teach us some things. So oh, wow. Joe much of yesterday was sending things to Joe to say, here's what our organization looks like, here's what we do, um, get to know us better, and then come uh, share some wisdom with us. That's so, nice yeah. to, to develop those relationships because, you know, you, you sit there and you'll tell businesses, hey, it's important to be part of the chamber because of networking and, and mm-hmm. that communication. But if you as a chamber are doing it yourself. Oh, exactly, exactly. We we know, I, I know Krista and I, um, 
you know, both have benefited so much from the network of other chamber directors. And, and it is a very sharing community, as I would suggest most of our business community is, too. We're often afraid to ask, uh, thinking that, well, we're competitive, so we, you know, nobody's going to give away their secrets. But the truth is most people are really excited to share what they've been successful at and really not too timid about telling you what didn't work out so well. Right. So, um, so yeah, we're. I, I think we're both looking forward to implementing things we learned, and probably uh, getting ready to go back again next year. <laughs> it's. It has to be uh, exciting to to get into the new year, and again, you sort of hit the reset button. But all those things that seem like we've been talking about the festivals and. You're going to be gearing up for them again now. We are. We are. We have our calendar planned. So uh, we've shared it through our newsletter and such. Uh, we have the, the calendar on our website. So if you want to get our dates on your calendar, we suggest get out your smartphone and put them on there right now and make a plan. Uh, we, I think I might have mentioned before, but I, worth mentioning again, that if you would like to host a networking event, uh, with um, certainly with the Venango Chamber, with any chamber, now's the time to put that on the calendar, too. Because we get really busy, and uh, it's important to look out and say, you know, if we want to have an event, we want to give it enough time to be promoted, but also not take a chance of there being a conflicting event. So uh, if that's something that you see in your future, give us a call so we can make a plan right now to uh, host an open house at your event, at your location. What event this past year um, exceeded your expectation? Oh, unfortunately, in northwestern Pennsylvania, it's hard to avoid talking about weather. So, you know, <laughs> our Cranberry Festival was um, was one that started off the morning with as good as a September day gets in northwestern PA and ended the same way. Uh, we were just blessed by, <laughs> by that phenomenal day. Uh, but w- we had a year of, of good events. Um, uh, there were many highlights, but... That that day was just perfect. Well, the rain held off for the uh, Oil Heritage Parade, we, yeah, and that we, was just beautiful. Yeah, we had a good festival there. We kicked off the year with a great annual dinner, uh, recognizing the Heplers, who great community members. Uh, our Young Professional event was another great recognition event, and of course Franklin Bronze at the Business of the Year. So I, you know, I have a place in my heart for recognizing uh, the excellence in our community. I think so often we forget that there are people working so hard and doing such good work. And it's important for us to celebrate those that are doing good. So, you know, it was a good year. All righty. Susan, as always, thank you so much. A couple weeks left and we'll we'll be ready for a new year. (laughs) We will. See you next week. All righty. Sounds good. Susan Williams, thank you so much. This is the Morning Drill. We've got news and that weather forecast coming up. Plus, Crawford County Commissioner Jack Lynch will be joining us.